Good evening, viewers, and welcome to this edition of NTV Sports Page. It's Tuesday, the 6th of September, and I'm Curtis Morton. In our headlines, Nivision fans sorely disappointed, and in our feature for this evening, St. Kitts Nevis on the 17s lose final game. We'll take this break, and I'll be right back. We represent the students of 4A1 Room 2, and you are watching NTV. CSS, we lie and in charge. Well, I'm back and we start with cricket. Scores of Nivisions braved the inclement weather on Sunday to travel to St. Kitts to witness the final set of matches to be played at Warner Park for CPL 2022. According to one fan, the boat ride to St. Kitts on the MV Mark Twain was something else. There were times when it seemed like the boat was going to topple over and some people were screaming, but Captain Lester really knows his onions and he got us there safely. We may have gotten there sooner, but you don't want to see how some people were pulling back the boat. They were gripping their seats and people close to them. The fans were able to witness the first game of the day and the grand women's finals, but after waiting for several hours for the run-up and the outfield to dry out sufficiently, the scheduled match between the home team, that's SKN Patriots and Amazon Warriors, was eventually called off, with the safety of the players being the main priority. The local fans returned to Nevis, again braving the rough seas, sorely disappointed not to see their home team. In related news, after a hectic couple of weeks in St. Kitts, the CPL train moves to St. Lucia this week. The match is scheduled as follows. Tomorrow, Wednesday, the 7th September, Barbados Royals vs. Trinbago Night Riders at 10 a.m. St. Lucia Kings vs. Jamaica Tallowers at 7 p.m. Thursday, the 8th of September, Amazon Warriors vs. SK and Patriots at 10 a.m. St. Lucia Kings vs. Barbados Royals at 7 p.m. Saturday, the 10th of September, Jamaica Tallowers vs. Trinbago Night Riders at 10 a.m. St. Lucia Kings take on Amazon Warriors at 7 p.m. Sunday, the 11th of September, Jamaica Tallowers vs. Barbados Royals at 10 a.m. St. Lucia Kings vs. Eskin Patriots at 7 p.m. Now to tennis. Serena Williams said what is in all likelihood her goodbye to tennis on Friday night last at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. 23 years and 22 Grand Slam titles after winning her first there in the U.S. Open. She lost to the Australia's at Ajela Tomjanovic in a 10 7 5 6 7 7 4 6 1 match full of the signature power and fight she has employed to rule women's tennis for the past two decades. In the final game, she staved off six match points and took Tomjanovic to deuce eight times. Just two words running through her mind, even as the inevitable became clear more spin. It was the most thrilling night of a week-long run that Williams has called a bonus to her nearly 27-year career. She said she wanted her play to live up to all the pomp and circumstances on Friday, and it did. After the final game, Williams held her hand over her heart and mouthed, I love you, to the thundering spectators on their feet in the Arthur Ashe Stadium. We'll take this break and I'll be back with our feature for this evening. Well, I'm back, and tonight football is in the spotlight. 
coach of the St. Kitts Nevis Under-17 team that participated in the CONCACAF Under-17 qualifiers, which were played in the Dominican Republic recently, Alexis Morris, is still very pleased with the output of his youthful team, despite the loss in the final game to the home team of five goals to one. We take in these two SKNFA reports. <music> The young Sugar Boys flew past the Dominica two goals to nil in the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship Qualifier on Thursday in the Dominican Republic. The goals were scored by Vihonre Francis in the 34th minute, his second goal of the tournament, and Josiah Bradshaw, who scored from the penalty spot to add the second goal in the 84th minute. Coach Alexis Morris praised his players for the win and described the flow of the match. We gave a total team effort against the Dominica team and it paid off, so... I must say kudos to the guys. They really stuck to the game plan. They really went out there. And the first 15 minutes of play, they really went out there and high press and tried to win back the ball in the very important areas. And as a result, we were able to get the go-ahead goal. Coach Morris knows the next matchup against the host Dominican Republic will be a tough one, but believes his strategy will bode well in that match. Well, we have to be very cautious, of course. We have to We realize that the only way that we can get forward into the the, into February 2023 is by basically coming away with a victory. And so we have to be very cautious, of course. We realize that we have to be very disciplined. We have to be very organized. I believe that we have been having some very good defensive game in our know, tour encounters so far. And we just have to be able to contain the Dominican Republic team. And hopefully once we get our chances going on the next side of, of things that we put away the chances that we we would, we'd, uh, we would create. I know that, as I said before, that scoring goals would have been one of our downfalls. And you realize that we haven't had big margins like the Dominican Republic team, but we are able to keep clean sheets and that is very important for us. And so we just have to be very cautious and show that we defend well. And when, they, when we get the moments on the flip side of it, that we go away and we put away our chances. And I think that uh, we would basically want to ensure that we continue to rally behind the guys, keep their spirits high. The Young Sugar Boys will play the Dominican Republic at 7 p.m. on Saturday. The match will be broadcast live on the CONCACAF website at www.concacaf.com and click in the page CONCACAF Go or download the CONCACAF mobile app. The winner of that match will qualify for the 2023 CONCACAF Under-23 Championship. <music> Despite losing 5-1 to the Dominican Republic in the final match of the Under-17 CONCACAF Championship Qualifier on Saturday night, the Young Sugar Boys take pride in their overall performance in the competition. Coach of the team, Alexis Morris, said the players displayed organization, discipline and determination in the first 45 minutes of that match, which gave the Young Sugar Boys a 1-0 lead at half-time. And we saw that once we put all three into perspective that we would have been able to uh, capitalize on the shortcomings of the Dominican Republic team. We really sucked up the pressure for the time that we were out there in the first 45. We were well disciplined, we were well organized, we were very well determined. And as a result, we were able to get to the go-ahead goal lead in the first half, some one goal to nil. Unfortunately, in the second half, the Dominican Republic team resurged with a new formation, Coach Morris explained. And as a result, we were able to allow the Dominican Republic team back into the game. Uh, we lost, as, a, as a result of that first goal taken very quickly in the second half, our guys continued to crumble under the pressure. And as a result, we underwent a 5-1 defeat to the Dominican Republic team. I must say that the Dominican Republic team is a very well-organized team, a very well-put-together team. However, Coach Morris was grateful for the progress of the team and the well-wishers from fans back in St. Kitts and Nevis. He also thanked the St. Kitts Nevis Football Association for giving him an opportunity to coach again in the national setup. It was good being back in the national setup after quite a long layoff. And I must also say congratulations to the parents, the support group, all those who rallied behind the team who have sent their support via text, whatever means they would have sent their, their, their support. We are grateful. Those of you who looked at the game and would have texted me after, giving me congratulations and 
asking me not to bow my head, but to keep striving for excellence is one of the things that I would have heard from, from persons back home. So I just want to say thanks to each and every one of you back home in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nidus who have wished, who have wished the team well and for every success despite having undergone that loss last night. Coach Morris commended his players and thanked the backroom staff for their work with the team. The management team that travelled with the boys included Tishon Francis, equipment manager, Alistair James, physio and trainer, Sienna Leader, manager, Thrizen Leader, assistant coach, coach Alexis Morris and Dwana Pemberton, team doctor. <music>